Okay, we're jo jumping into the Atlantic Division. We are doing a review and my standings of what I think the Atlantic Division is going to be uh, coming out to. Uh, and so we're going to be going over my rankings and how is it going to fall out. Uh, I, and if you want to see individual reviews of every team uh, I'm going over, I'm just going to do a quick probably one to two minutes reviewing some of the reasons I believe that they're going to be in the position they are. Again, we're just going to go over the Atlantic Division. We'll be going through every division, uh, and we'll be able to see you'll be able to see everything. So, uh, you know, just let's get right into it. Uh, jump right into it. So, this is last year's standings. You have Boston finishing it with a historic year. Uh, Toronto did very well as well. I'm very happy with them actually. Uh, I think they they play very well. Tampa Bay, of course, lighted on fire. Um, Florida Panthers doing very well as well, making it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, Boston. That's a bummer for you guys. Sorry, I, it's, it's just a bummer. Uh, you guys should have been better, and that's that's just the, the, what it is. It's gonna be a tough year for you guys too after the after your uh, big players you lost, which we'll go over. Uh, Buffalo Sabers, same. Buffalo Sabers just missing the playoffs barely. Um, I definitely see them as a making a real push. Ottawa, you know, Detroit, Canadians are doing a rebuild. It's it is what it is. So let's jump over my rankings real quick. So I'm gonna be going through these, showing you the pages, and then we'll have the full list at the end. So stick around. And if you like what you're seeing today, hit like, subscribe, and comment. Appreciate it. And let me know your opinions, cause uh, cause tell me I'm wrong, cause cause I think I'm right. I mean, I I talk to myself all day about this hockey stuff. So you tell me if I'm wrong and what you think about my rankings. And if you got a team, I know Ottawa Senator fans will will have a lot to talk about. So. Tell me about what you think about my rankings and everything. So first off, we'll jump into my first place team. I think it's going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think Toronto is a pretty full set team, um, a phenomenal forward group. You have Matthews, Marner, Tavares. I mean, you have some of the rookies that are coming in, Matthew Nyes. Um, you got great depth and everything. Just made a trade, moved out Sam Lafferty. They still have a little bit of cap. They got to move around still. But this is just small stuff. I mean, they can move out, move out a guy or send some people down. It's not a huge deal. They did, they did just wave Martin Jones, so that should help bring that down as well. But in my opinion, uh, phenomenal A plus de forward defense. Better, I'd say. I wouldn't say no. Better, not if it's better, but it is good, right? You have Jake McCabe, the guy in the Chicago Deer last year. Riley is a, is a number one defenseman, not your star defenseman, but he is a number one defenseman. Um, and you have, uh, I mean, you have uh, Giordano, who's still playing well as one of, as one of the oldest players in the league. Uh, Lilligren, I've always liked. Um, the only one of the big concerns, I'd say. Is you have Samsonov who didn't play amazing in the preseason. Again, it is preseason though, so there's not much to say here. Um, but uh, Wool, their backup goalie, who'll be playing backup Martin Jones again, being sent down to the AHL, uh, played super well last year in a very limited sample, about seven games, I believe it was. And so with that, you're thinking, okay, well, this player is going to be a little bit better, right? You know, he's going to have a good backup, and if not, Samsonov's position could be taken by Wool in uh, as a backup or be. Taking a start, it'd be wild, right? Next up in the division, I have the Tampa Bay Lightning being in second place. Now we hold on. I know you're talking, you're thinking, Brad, you're crazy. Uh, this is my the reason I feel this way is that you have a you have the goalie out, right? Vasilevsky is out for the season. Not for, sorry for not for the season for the first two months. I think he's out till December is what I got in my notes here. Um, but the one thing I, w I wanted to say about him and the team is that their back of their goalies are not very proven. Um, I think Jonas Johansson, or was it's going here? Uh, yeah, Matt Tompkins, Jonas Johansson. Yo Jonas Johansson did play with the uh, Avalanche last year. Um, but really, my thing is that you don't need excellent goaltending in the regular season. You need average goaltending in the season. And the biggest, one of the biggest ways you can get good average goaltending is you have a great defense core. I mean, look at this defense score. You have Mikhail Sergachev, you have Hedman, Cernak, uh, Perbix is really breaking out. Calvin DeHaan has had a lot of talk about this. Darren Radish. I mean, there's, this is a solid defense core. And I think if defense can make up for the, you know, take out, take away some of the, the shooting opportunities, for uh, best less, or for the backup, I think that'd be a huge thing, uh, and just keep the guys the outside and everything, and that is the real key indicator of why I have the Tampa Bay over the next team, which would be the Florida Panthers. So the Florida Panthers I have in third. Um, I, I mean, clearly they had a huge breakout season last year, uh, being that they went to the Stanley Cup Finals uh, again, losing to the Vegas Golden Knights. But and, and well, the one key reason that I have them um, below Tampa Bay 
is that they do have goaltending. They had Spencer. Uh, Spencer Knight is their third who went down to the AHL. It was been sent down to the AHL. Um, but they do have a uh, goalie in Bobrovsky. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's one of the most expensive goalies in the league. Um, but the, and that is that is one solidifying factor if he's playing well. And, and that's the thing is that there is a little bit of some issues with the Florida Panthers in that having Bob me being a stellar goaltender. But you can have a great goaltender, but if you also have a bad defense, that keys into having a bad goaltender, right? So if you have a poor defense, it makes your goaltending look worse than it actually is, right? And that's why Tampa Bay, even if they have a, a worse goaltender in, in net, they have a higher ranking because they have a defense that can kind of cover for the mistakes of the goalie. Now, Florida doesn't have that, be that they have Ekblad and Montour out until December, right? Um, again, I, I don't think it's it's good enough. I mean, mind you, this is at the start of the season. This is coming into the season. If we do a mid-season review, we could see these flop, right? We could see that Florida is just uh, having phenomenal, having great defense and putting up great numbers. Again, we know they can score. Um, but, it's, again, it's a defense they have they have issues with. Uh, or you can see that Tampa Bay is really faltering with this goal, with the goaltending. It's just that bad that it's, you're, you're getting terrible goaltending. You're getting AHL-level goaltending that it just doesn't work out for them. So I could see this. They could flip-flop, but in my opinion, it's going to be Tampa Bay in uh, second, and we got four and two. And this is, of course, I because of the last four people that four teams that were in the playoffs, I do have Boston making it into, as the fourth team. Um, I am not super high on Boston, clearly going from first to the fourth. But the crazy thing is that they could have 20 less wins than last year and still be in the playoffs. And that's kind of where I think they're going to be. They lose Bergeron. They lose Krejci. Um, but I just don't think Zaka and Coyle are going to be the center depth that they actually need. That's going to be the real needle movers for them. I mean, of course, you still have Pasternak. You still have um, Marshawn, right? You have a phenomenal... You have a good couple of elite guys up there, but your depth is at the Bruins. It's just not there. And that's just a consequence of the prospects. You haven't picked. They've always been in the playoffs. So they've always been picking in like 16 or lower, right? Or 16 or higher, right? So you're getting a 16 to 32 pick. It's just not going to work out for you. And then going into next year, they don't even have, I don't think they have a pick. They don't even have a pick next year either, right? So again, I just don't see Boston really solidifying a space and it's solidifying a spot there plus you also they don't have a cap, cap space to move anywhere right now they do have a phenomenal goaltending tandem um with uh allmark and swayman one of the best goaltending tandems uh phenomenal players allmark winning the vesna last year um it is i mean you that that's one of the things that's the saving graces for them and i think this may be their um last dance in this case where they're Really going to put that effort in, maybe trade out, maybe trade a second round pick. But to me, in my opinion, they're going to be doing a bit of a teardown after this, just because unless they can get another established player, again, look, they, they don't have much, right? They, this is not much to work with here. And so I just don't see them going farther than this. But I will say the one team that could take this spot in the Atlantic Division in the playoffs from Boston Bruins is the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres. I am very high on. I think they did a rebuild. I think they did the rebuild well, and they got the they got good pieces right for the Jack Eichel trade. They got pieces from the O'Reilly trade as well, and they are. I think they're there, and if it's not this year, it's next year that they are going to be so good. And they're fortunate in that they got end up getting a first round two first overall drafts. Right, they got you got your Rasmus Dahlins and you got your Owen Powers. What a phenomenal decor in that sense. And then you got a lot of guys who are just bringing, bringing it up. You have Tage Thompson. And you you have like you have these dynamic guys just going down to the list of the guys. There's so many so many players here that are on needle movies in this case. Jeff Skinner has really bounced back and started to really earn that contract. Tage Thompson. I mean, you can't you can't go past Instagram without seeing a Tage Tom, Thompson. He's practically the uh Connor McDavid of this side of the the states, right? Dylan Cousins is really awesome. Uh Captain uh, or no Captain that's Akpos, not Olsen. <laughs> uh, Alex Tuck from the Eagle trade. Banger season. Right? He came he came in injured, but he's he did a great job, right? They picked they traded for Jordan Greenway. Middlestad's doing well. I mean, there's a lot of good guys. Peyton Krebs in, in the in the deal, another first round pick. Zach Benson really a new, new 2023 pick honestly could make his way onto the team. And if they get him, he's a goal scoring, scoring dynamic Matthew Savoy, the 2022 pick 
I mean, there's just so much scoring. These guys are the definition of a glass cannon, uh, just scoring at will. Uh, and, and again, going back to the defense, right? You have Dahlin, you have San Matias Samuelson, who they signed long-term, like seven years, I think, last year. Um, you have Kiharu, right? Power. Like, those are, these are some really good guys. You probably need a little bit better depth, but that's why, you, that's why you bring Eric Johnson in as, like, a depth veteran person. But the big hole, and the reason why I think they're going to be in fifth is their goaltending. Eric Comrie. And Uka Pekalukinen, that's just not going to do it. But they did bring Devin Levi at the end. And Devin Levi could be the reason that, that, that they push for that last playoff spot in the Atlantic. Because Devin Levi, is he's an unknown, let's be honest, right? But in the seven games that he did play, he had a 2.94 goals against average and a .905 save percentage, which is slightly below the average with goal scoring going up in the league. But a .905 is not bad. That And that's kind of what they need. They just need average goaltending, right? I mean, ideally they want <laughs> excellent goaltending, but you really just need a slightly about a average to a little bit above that um, for their goaltending, right? And mind you, if you're looking at the Buffalo Sabres, I just listed all these great players. Look at their cap space. They have $7.9 million in cap space. The, and there was rumors talking about picking up Patrick Kane. Imagine Cap Patrick Kane on this Kane on this. He looks playing the third line because there's no room. There's so many good players here. Um, or if anything else, right? <coughs> and Cap Patrick Kane would probably only command like three to four million dollars. That gives you a lot more free, uh, uh, space to end up uh, trading out guys and getting them at half retained. Uh, this could be huge. I'm I think that is a I very high on the Sabers. Again, I don't know if this is the year to go all in on it. I think you wait one more year. Let Tampa Bay get a little bit worse. Uh, let Boston get even worse, right? And they have to have to decide on a direction for them. But really, they could break out next year into that spot. So I see them as, as fifth, potentially swapping for that Boston spot. So n next on the list, I do have the Ottawa Senators, sixth on the list. Um, I'm not as high on Ottawa Senators as some people are. I think that there's really great pieces. I think you have some star players, right? You have Brady Chuck, right? You have Stutzla. You have uh, Batherson. You have some good upfront guys that are top tier, right? Even we go if we go to their um, their depth charts, they have some phenomenal guys that you're you're just blown away by on what the numbers that they put up, right? Uh, to Chuck, you have Claude Giroux, right? Your veteran presence, right? Um, Ridley Gregley is, is Ridley Greg is coming out. Batherson, right? Kubalik was in the in the Debrinkat trade. Now, mind you, if, speaking, of the, speaking of the Debrinkat trade. You guys did lose that goal scoring. Uh, was it a phenomenal 40 goal score? No, it was 26, I believe it was. Uh, Kubelik does make up some of that, but he is not going to be the guy that he's. you're going to put on the PP1, right? He's not the guy that, that takes over and takes charge. He's the one that leads the play. And neither was Debrinkat, but you need someone that's a needle mover, right? And they did trade for Tarasenko, which I think is a – or they picked up Tarasenko for, but for $5 million – I just don't know if that was worth it. <coughs> worth it with having to pay, with having to still sh sign Shane Pinto, um, and they're just not a lot of cap space, right? So they're they're gonna have to make a move out of desperation and move a guy that maybe they don't want to, like Matthew Joseph. Um, so, in my opinion, I just don't I don't see them having. I think they have good players. I think their top six is pretty dang good, right? Um, but I don't see them being elite, and that's the issue, right there. They're elite. Uh, depth wise, right? So the tops are really good. Their bottom, I'm not sure on this. The Zach McEwen, Kelly Parker, I mean, uh, Ro I mean, like I just don't, I don't love this bottom six. And to me, honestly, uh, Batherson should be, or not Batherson, uh, Tara Sunka should maybe be moving up as well. I think you put Claude Giroux at center here, move Ridley Gregg down, and Tara Sunko up. But that's the, again, it's just not that deep at the uh, the forward position, and I do think they have some great uh, defensemen, right? If you're moving on to the defensemen here, you got Shabbat, you have Chikrin, Sanderson, Art and Zoom, right? Zoom, right? Brandstrom and, and Hamannik, debatable, not a great, but there is good goal. There is good defense here, um, but another hole that I, in my opinion, is a, is a little bit is going to be <coughs> uh, in the goalie position. The goalie position is I. I liked Corpus Allo. He did have a good year last year, but he's never been a full, I say, starter. He did 28 games um, with the Blue Jackets last year. I think it was a 28. Uh, I, I can't remember what it is, but he also played 11 games with the LA Kings. Um, with the Blue Jackets, he, he did very well. 0.921 gate, uh, save percentage and a 2.13 goals against average. Oh, that, oh, sorry, that was with the Kings in the, in the 11 games. Uh, with Blue Jackets, he did have a 0.913 save percentage. Um, which is great. I mean, I think he had a higher goals against average because the, the blow Jack, Blue Jack didn't have a great defense. Um, but I don't know if he's a starter. I think he's a good 
a good backup. I don't know if he's a starter yet. So given that uh, four year, four million for five years, is a little long. I mean, that, that's what you get for picking up a free agent goalie. And so I don't know if Ottawa is fully there yet. Again, I don't know if they're deep enough, which is why I was I was concerned when they waved some, a couple of their first round draft picks and second round draft picks. To me, this isn't the year where you go all in, right? Again, I don't know why you pick up Tarasenko. I don't think it's your year. I think you still have time. You have a lot of young guys that are still developing. And let them, let them cook. Let them bake a little bit. Let them t- take time to simmer, right? You know, so that in my opinion, that's why I have Ottawa as six. And then if we move on to my seventh pick, I do have Detroit. And I, I am a big fan of Detroit. I I'm a Detroit. I'm from Detroit. I in Detroit area. I'd say <laughs> I like Detroit a lot. I actually think that Detroit jumped out of this rebuild a little too soon. Uh, I think they loaded up with free agents. I like too fast that I didn't like, I didn't care for the moves they did last year. I knew you had to fill in some spots, but this year picking up, I think it was like 10 or 11 free agents. It was just, it seemed like a lot. It was a lot. And they just signed uh, Zach Azaris today too, to a, to a two way contract. They are sending him down to the, to the AHL though. So, but to me, Red Wings are just mid tier right now. They're just, they're just, the problem is, is that you sign all these free agents and they're not guys that are going to be on your team long-term. So you're filling spots right now for guys that are mid tier. You're paying these, them these contracts. I do like the comfort pickup, Right, if we go if we go down to their players right here, um, they have they have a lot of good players, um, and that they're working with. You have you get the different guy trade. The ring guy was a great pickup. He really didn't give Ottawa much of a choice, but it was good. You just moved out. You moved out of a, I think it was like a fourth round pick, like the Kubalik and Sabrango and a first round pick. I think it was so pretty reasonable for a potential forty goal scorer. And hopefully there's some chemistry between him and Dylan Larkin. Right, um, cop. Good, def- good defensive forward does and has and a good two way forward. JD Cover another two way forward, a little more off- offensive upside, right? Perron's phenomenal. Uh, Fabry Sprong was a great pickup. Um, you have Fisher was a good 13, 12 13 defenseman, right? Again, Zach Aston Reese being um being the guy that's going to be in the AHL. But to me, these are all mid. You're waiting for your guys to come up, right? To me, even there's not even a spot for Jonathan Bergen on, on this team. I think he's going to end up getting sent down because there's just not going to be room for him. And that's that's what, yeah, what you want out of a guy who has a potential six like upside of being a top six guy. So to me, you're they have and they have some cap space too. I think they have like five million dollars in cap space. I believe it was, yeah, a little, a little over five million dollars in cap space. So, but to me, if you're looking at these guys, you're a lot of these guys, you're gonna, you're gonna end up wanting to flip because to me, again, they're not ready to go all in. They're not trading out first round bat- draft picks for uh, rentals, right? They they sent it out one out for Derinka, so that is a full. They, and he signed a four year deal, but he's not a rental, right? So to me, like you're most likely looking to sell off, right? And I I wouldn't be surprised. Move David Perron. I think he has a, a partial no movement cost. I think he's a ten team no trade cost, right? Move out Daniel Sprong. Christian Fisher, like some of these guys, and make room for your rookies that are going to be coming up. And it's the same with the defense, right? You sign Ben Schrott long term, who I think is too expensive, and I wouldn't assign him in the first place. Um, but that is me. Uh, I, I would not. Shane Gosper is going to have a phenomenal year playing on PP1 or uh, probably PP1. Uh, is either, either him or Cider, but put up a ton of points for him, flip him at the deadline, right? Uh, you sign Justin Hall. Didn't care for that one. Uh, you you signed up Olimata. You traded for Jeff Petrie. Again, some of these guys are just mid, right? You're, I, I like Mata. I really like Mata, but he's a third pair D. I like Jeff Petrie. He's good. He he's ten, on a team like this, potentially second pair, right? Um, but you, but with a guy like Sherratt and Hall, you kind of want them to be your ten, your your middle pairs, right? You that's why you, you signed in these big deals, like at four point seven five million. Sherratt shouldn't be a third defenseman. So I'm not convinced that this team is good enough to make a playoff push. And Huso had a down year. I really like James Reimer, but he's 35. He's just older. He had a t- he had his worst year last year, and he is capable of bounce back, and he looked really good in the preseason. preseason. But with Billy Huso, he needs to have a bounce back. He was under 900. He needs to bounce back. And so to me, like, I, and the nice thing is there are seven defensemen here now, which is, which is crazy to say about the Red Wings. That was not the case last year. Um, but I, to me, I just don't see the Red Wings being, and, and which by the way, they were in seventh last year and I still see them in the same position, potentially fighting far longer for a playoff spot, but still end up trading at the deadline. Um, cause that's just to me is the best position for the team because they're still in a rebuild. In my opinion, they have, a, they're coming out of it, but they are still in that rebuild. They are not ready to, to pull the trigger yet. 
And lastly, the Canadians. I like what the Canadians are doing. Similar to Buffalo, I think you're having a great rebuild. I think you're picking up great pieces. Um, again, look, at, got quite a few draft picks here, and there's that Red Wing, Red Wing from the uh, Petrie deal. Uh, they got a first round draft pick from the Monahan deal. Uh, I mean, and, and by the way, who also they have still playing for them, Sean Monahan right here. But a lot of these guys, you're gonna end up trading for picks, right? You're gonna have, you're gonna send out. You have Tanner Janot. Hope may, someone may not, might not pick him up. He's a little expensive, but. Um, Picking up Sean Monahan, I think definitely trading him to a contender. And you have all these young pieces. Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, uh, Josh Anderson. Eh, he's not young anymore, but he's, he's there. You all made it was just put on, put on waivers. But Kirby Doc, right? You have a lot of young players. Jake Evans. Like, there's a lot of young guys. Harvey Pernard. Uh, where, where else is he at? Uh, Slavkovsky, right? You have these young guys where you need to just incubate them. And let them grow and let them be better, right? And make and make hockey fun for them, right? And one of the things that, that you have to see uh, Marty St. Louis, coach of the Montreal Canadiens, need to do is just build these guys, develop them, show them how to have fun, show them how to score. Caulfield blew up like crazy when St. Louis started coaching him. And then same with Mont. So and figure out what's going to happen with Montembeau. Is he going to be your starter eventually? Is he does he have that capability? I know it was a waiver claim pickup from Florida. But Allen only has two years left in his contract, right? And he's getting older. He's not old, but he's getting older. And so you need to prepare. And what, who is that goalie of the future, right? Carey Price is no longer coming in and save the day. Uh, Allen is signed up again for two more years. But Montembeau has one year left on his deal. Are you looking to keep him long term? So, again, this is my review. So if we're going over the over what we just went over today, uh, let's see. Run over to my list right here. So here's my list. I got again. I got. Toronto, Tampa, Florida, and Boston all making the playoffs. Buffalo potentially taking a spot away from Boston. Um, I don't see – I definitely see the top three definitely being Florida, Tampa, uh, and Toronto. Um, again, Buffalo I'm pretty high on. But, again, I don't think it's the year yet because I don't think – I don't know if they're there yet. Um, there's still a bit of more defensive development there. Um, but maybe that playoff experience would be good getting knocked out in the first round, especially by Toronto. That would be wild. I, and I think if it went Toronto versus Buffalo – I think Toronto has a better shot of beating Buffalo than Boston just because of the skeletons that come with that. Um, but I, I think this is great. I think this is a great list. I'm pretty confident in it. Like I said, the only thing I really have is is the uh, Boston and Buffalo. I, I can see them switching. So let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like, subscribe, and uh, catch you later. Love you. Bye.